welcome back for our unit talking about transformations. Today's transformation is reflection, or better known as flip. The figure before the transformation is called the pre-image, and we label the pre-image with letters. So for example, if we had a triangle, we'd have triangle A, B, C. After we apply the transformation, we use a little mark that looks like an apostrophe, and when we read this symbol, we call it prime. So for our example, we have A prime, B prime, C prime. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that in some examples. So here in example A, it says show a reflection of A, B, C over the Y axis and label the image A prime, B prime, C prime. So the first most important thing is to figure out which axis you're gonna be crossing over when you do your reflection. So the first thing we're gonna do since we're talking about the Y axis in this case is I'm gonna draw a line down from my Y axis because that's the one I know I'm going to be going over. So now that I know I'm going over the Y axis, I'm simply going to count out how many points each of my points is away from that Y axis and do it on the opposite side or flip it. So in this case, A is going to be one, two, three, four, five spaces away from the Y axis. So I'm going to just do the same thing on the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five. And that's where that point is. And I'm gonna label it A prime. I'm going to do the same thing with B. It is one, two spaces away. So one, two spaces away the other way. And I'm going to call that B prime. I'm going to do the same thing with C. But rather than counting, I'm going to just notice that C is out at negative nine. So since C is out at negative nine, I'm going to just go to negative nine on the, or positive nine on the opposite side and bring my line up to where C is at positive four and label that C prime. So you can either count or you can figure out where the coordinate is and just do the opposite. Once I've done that, I'm gonna connect all of my points to make my triangle, and then I've done a reflection, and notice it looks exactly the same, if the lines were straight, as the triangle on the other side. So I'm not gonna change the shape of my triangle at all, I'm going to keep my triangle the same shape, I'm just gonna make sure that it moves from one side to the other. And this one went over the Y axis, so notice it flipped over the Y axis. Now let's take a look at example B. So here in example B, it says show a reflection over the horizontal axis and label the image D prime, E prime, F prime. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start by figuring out which axis I'm going over. And since it says horizontal, I'm going to figure out and draw a line across my horizontal axis because that's the one I'm going to be flipping over. And again, I can count just like I did the last time, but instead of counting from the Y, this time I'm gonna count from the X. So my D has gone one, two spaces. So I'm gonna go one, two spaces the opposite direction and label that D prime. I'm gonna do the same thing for E. It's gone one space, so I'm gonna go one space the other way and call that E prime. And then I've got F, and I could count, but I'm gonna notice that it's at negative five, so I'm gonna just stay on that line and go up to positive five, because that would be the opposite, and label that F prime. So now that I've got all my points, I'm gonna go ahead and connect them using lines to make my triangle, and notice it flipped over. Now this triangle was both in positive and negative coordinates. It was split by the axis that we were going over, but that doesn't matter, because all we're doing is flipping the points to their opposites. That's it. We don't care whether it's over one side or the other, or most of it's in the middle. It doesn't matter. We just wanna do the opposite. Now let's try some practice problems on your own. So here we are at practice number one. It says show the reflection over the vertical axis. Label the image G prime, H prime, J prime. So you're gonna try this one on your own. You're gonna pause the video now, then press play again to see if you are right. How did you do? Did your triangle look like mine? Did it flip exactly over the axis? Notice the points should line up. So if G is at positive three, positive four, G prime is at negative three, positive four. If yours looks like mine, great. If not, go ahead and make it sure that it does look like mine now. And let's move on to the next example. So here at example C, it says the parallelogram ABCD has the following vertices and to reflect the parallelogram over the horizontal axis. What are the coordinates of the image A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, and show the graph of A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime on the coordinate plane. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. The first is we could draw the original shape and do our counting like we just did. 
However, there's a faster way. Because we have the points, and we've already explored a little bit of them being opposites, what we need to remember is the opposite coordinate is the inverse. So in this case, since we're talking about the horizontal axis as the thing that we're going to be going over, the thing that we're going to be needing to change is the y coordinate because, because it is the opposite of horizontal. So likewise, if we were going over the vertical axis, the thing that would change would be the x coordinate. But since we're going over the horizontal axis, we're going to be changing the y coordinate. So since we have negative 5, positive 3, and we're going to be changing only the y coordinate, that's the only coordinate that we're going to be changing, we should end up with negative 5, negative 3. That's the only coordinate that we're changing is the y. Same thing with b. We're going to change only the y to its inverse. So negative 1, negative 3. With c, we're going to have negative 3, and the opposite of 0 is 0, so that's just going to stay 0. And d, we've got negative 7, and again, the opposite coordinate of 0 is 0, so we have negative 7, 0. So we didn't have to draw the shape. We just needed to know that rule to change which point we needed to change. So when we write them down in the box, we should have a prime is negative 5, negative 3, b prime, negative 1, negative 3, c prime, negative 3, 0, and d prime, negative 7, 0. But that's not the end of the problem because the problem asks us to show this on the coordinate plane. So now we need to graph what we just figured out. So we need to go to negative 5, negative 3, and bring ourselves down, negative 5, negative 3, and label that a prime. We need to go to negative 1, negative 3, and label that b prime. We need to go to negative 3, 0, and label that c prime. And we need to go to negative 7, 0, and label that d prime. And now we've got our parallelogram connecting all of our points using lines. And we should have ourselves a nice parallelogram, which is what they asked us to draw. Now let's have you try another practice problem. Here we are at practice number two, and it says KLM has the vertices that are listed below, and reflect the triangle over the vertical axis. Find the coordinates of L prime. So all you need to do when you're doing this practice problem is find L. K and M don't matter. They gave you a graph. You can use that if you want, or you can use that rule that we just talked about. It's up to you. So pause the video now, try the best that you can, then press play again to see if you are right. How did you do? Did you get 4, negative 4? Again, we're changing the vertical axis or going over the vertical axis. So the only thing that needs to change in this case is the x coordinate because that's the opposite of the vertical. So all you needed to do is take positive 4 and make it negative 4. You don't care about k. You don't care about m because it only wants to know about l. You could have used the graph to do that. And sometimes you're not going to have the graph, though, and you're going to need to remember this rule. Let's have you try another practice problem. Here we are at practice number three, and it says the pre-image of the parallelogram EFGH is shown. Reflect the parallelogram over the x-axis and list the coordinates of the image. So again, you can use the graph that you like, or you can remember that rule and list the coordinates. You're going to try this one on your own. So pause the video now, then press play again to see if you are right. How did you do? Did you end up with the same answers that I did? Hopefully you did. If not, go ahead and make yours look like mine now. You either had to figure out the original points and then be able to make the changes, or you did the counting method and then wrote those points down. Hopefully you got it correct. Now let's take a look at some follow-up questions. So here are some questions they want us to answer. And it says the pre-image of the parallel li parallelogram lies in quadrant four and was reflected over the x-axis. What quadrant will the image lie? Hint, draw yourself a picture. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to draw a picture of our coordinate plane, and we're going to label that 1, 2, 3, 4. Remember that the quadrants go in a nice little C pattern, and it says that the shape is in quadrant 4. So we've got whatever shape it is of the parallelogram over here in quadrant 4, and it's going to be reflecting over the x-axis. So if I'm going over the x-axis, I can take a look and notice that my shape is going to end up right there in quadrant 1. The second question says the pre-image of the pentagon lies in quadrant 3 and is reflected over the y-axis. What quadrant will the image lie? Hint, draw ourselves another picture. So again, we're going to draw our coordinate plane and we're going to label it with 1, 2, 
3 and 4, and then it tells us that the shape is going to be in quadrant 3. So here's our shape of our pentagon, and it's going to be going over the y-axis. So we've got over the y-axis. So if I do that, where's my shape going to end up? And it's going to end up in quadrant 4. The last question it wants to know is the image and the pre-image are congruent or similar. So we're just trying to determine whether the shape is going to look exactly like the shape before or if it's going to look similar, like maybe it's changed its size. However, when we talk about reflection, our shape should always be congruent. They're going to be the exact same shape and the exact same size. They're just going to look like they're mirror opposites of each other. That brings us to the end of this video. So if you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub and we will catch you in the next one.